Hi, Simone. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? Okay. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine too. Um, what's what's the the last several months, half a year, maybe a year almost uh, for you? What's been what's been like? Uh, I guess like a forced second sabbatical, which um, was not planned at all, but we have to go with the flow, I guess. So I've been I've been home a lot um, doing behind the scenes work for Epica. Um, still a lot of things to do. Uh, rather be on stage, but I'm also enjoying more time off at home. I guess for the first time in many years, I can finally come to peace and have a chance to become restless again. <laughs> Was it was it easy to well to adapt to this new way of life? Uh, no, it still is not easy. I guess I'm used to being uh, on the road. I like the variety of being at a different place every day. And uh, yeah, I mean, my house is lovely, but after a while, I feel a little restless. And uh, I guess a lot of my colleagues have the same issue. Yeah, and um, have you found ways to cope with it? I mean, maybe extra hobbies or making more music or doing some other stuff? Uh, I have um, a lot of other things to do. I mean, I'm never bored. Um, I actually would like to have more hours to work during a day. But we also have, uh, my husband and I, we have a son. So we're also limited to do things. But I have uh, my uh, other two businesses as a photographer and blogger. So yeah, I have still don't have enough time to do everything I want. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, Which is good. <laughs> it's good, yeah. It's uh, been, uh, well, now five years since the, your, 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 the previous album. Uh, can you pick a, pick a, is there a pin, is there a time frame where you can say, well, this is actually the starting point for this new album, Oh My God? Uh, well, for me, a particular moment that kind of, uh yeah state in my memory is when we were uh, on tour in latin america uh, that was 2019 or to the no, 2019 october i think we were in costa rica we were having breakfast and then we got an email from yost our producer with a like a schedule a writing session schedule and uh, to plan everything for the new recording and i thought oh that's that's fast already and I had no idea what the other band members have been writing so far. I mean, we didn't put any pressure during our time off the road to write any songs, just that we would get together and throw all the songs in in one Dropbox. And surprisingly, there was a lot of material to work with. And that was around October 2019. And in November, we got together in the house in Fechel to work uh intensively together and i went to holland one more time after that to work on demo or two times to work on demo vocals and the recordings started in january 2020 the drum recordings so actually from my feeling it went all really fast this time uh, around and i think it was different now because you were actually working together for a time frame right was it uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Normally, uh, in between tours, we would write and record the album and uh, do it in our own home studio, the, the songwriting. And uh, now we had time to meet up in between because we have to travel from four different countries to meet up. Uh, Mark lives in Sicily, I live in Germany, Isaac lives in Belgium, and the rest in the Netherlands. And so it's hard for Mark and myself to <laughs> To be there every Sunday morning for the rehearsal, so we don't normally do that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why we rented the house for a week to uh, have like an intense uh, writing camp together with Yost on the songs. And we all set up our own home studio. There was music coming from every corner of the house. Everybody had their own room, and uh, yeah, it was a very effective, um, productive week. What did it do? I mean, actually to be together and to write again, what, what sort of feeling did you get if you compare it to what the previous albums when you were more, uh, more, more apart? I enjoyed it actually, um, because it's an immediate exchange of creative 
brain <laughs> brains uh, so to speak um if if i of course i worked on the songs at home as well and just made uh, some simple recordings on my phone i have a home studio but i like to be busy while for example getting ready doing my makeup listening to the demos and singing along and if a memory of if a melody comes i quickly get my phone and i record it and um being in this uh, in this house with the guys was was nice because i could immediately show them my ideas i could sing along to the songs and they could get a little bit of feeling of which uh, parts fit my voice really well and how to adapt the songs to it and it went like tuck tuck like really quick he was was there and he was like no no we have to go uh, lower no this part has to go higher otherwise she cannot sing it with you know great ease or and that kind of um, sped up the whole process. And if you, is there one song that was more completed during that week? That was so, some sort of well, the, the first starting direction of the of of the album. Uh, well, there was one song that went like super fast, and that's called the Skeleton Key. It's mm -hmm. a song written by Rob, our bass player. He wrote the Skeleton Key and Rivers, the ballad. And uh, Rivers was already, we knew the song. I also worked on it uh, at home, listened to it and tried some vocal ideas. And the Skeleton Key was a new song he had prepared just for when we were together in the house. We sat in the kitchen, he played the song, I sang along to it and he's like, oh, I love that. Um, can we record that? And that was the Skeleton Key. And the lyrics also, 50% were already written during the demo stages. And um, yeah, that just proves how, how fast it can go. But there are also songs that are quite tedious to work on or take forever, lyric-wise, vocal-wise. Um, yeah, but the Skeleton Key was like a, a quick uh, quick song. But did you already know what, what, what kind of direction uh, you would want to go lyric-wise and music-wise, or was it? during that week that you finally well that you that you made it up no uh, of course everybody after the holographic principle when the album was finished and we toured and we got you know to sounds weird but we got to know the songs really well and you can then analyze afterwards uh what you've done um and what you can improve and of course every album is a little bit uh how do you say a um um, a, a record like a recording of what's going on in your life and what's going on at that moment like with the photograph you can capture the moment but it's the same with the cd with the music it's also kind of a yeah a recording of that time a representation of how we are as people as a band and what's happening in the world artists are like a mirror of society yeah. i guess but also of ourselves and with the holographic principle my thought and we had of course many uh, talks as a band about it i found the holographic principle is very high energy all the time and for my taste a little bit too much or over the top and when we were promoting the design universe anniversary um edition when it was uh, 10 years old and we uh, went on the road to play the songs again we also re recorded some songs acoustically and that album is 10 years old, but I still love it very much up to date and I feel very much connected to it. And I wanted to go a little bit more in that direction for me, vocal wise, to have a little bit more headroom to work with. And uh, that's something we definitely took in mind for this record. And the same also for the mixing of the album to have it be more transparent uh, without being this huge wall of sound coming towards you being overly compressed and all of that so yeah but then there's six people and everybody loves or dislikes different things of the album and of course there are some band members that have the same opinion and that's just a, a band process and at the end of the day we all have to be happy with the album but we all have to make compromises and yeah that's just how it is well, so let's say re revisiting design your universe um uh, what did it tell you about the strong points of Epica? 
Well, the funny thing is that the song Martyr of the Free Word, which is a very heavy uh, song with grunts, that that was uh, transformed into a ballad just proves that the song in its essence is a good song because you can uh, turn it into any different uh, musical style and um, especially the ballad on the album, Tides of Time, the title track, Design Universe, the first Kingdom of Heaven that we wrote are for me, epic classics. And they are songs that now, many years later, 10 or 11 years later, I wouldn't change anything about. But there are also other epic songs where I think I would have done this or that differently. But that was sometimes not possible due to um, time pressure. And yeah, and also the, the moment you are in that, and in yeah. time so uh, well you you mentioned the skeleton key um lyric wise what uh what 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 is the song about and what and does it well resemble the whole album uh the skeleton key the um, a little behind the skeleton key is that the title the work title was inception and um, it's no secret that I love to be inspired by movies. Um, but Rob, the composer, gave it that name. And it's also one of my all-time favorite movies. The story, the visual, the soundtrack, it's just, uh, it's genius. And Rob gave it that name. And it, that gave me also the inspiration to go a little bit in the direction of what the movie is about, but also what I experience, I am a very vivid dreamer. So I find that super interesting. And the gist of the story is basically that we can explore different layers of our mind, but we can also control it. We basically are the master of our mind and we have the skeleton key. We have the ability to open up, yeah, doors and different rooms filled with whatever might come your way. Is it something that you do yourself too? I mean, train yourself? Do you train dreams? Do you? Is it something that you, well, actually uh, evolve? Not, not consciously, but I do have uh, a lot of nightmares and I like to analyze my dreams. Um, I can mostly always remember what I dreamt about. I wake up a lot in the night and I try to, sometimes I have insomnia, it's not so fun but I do like to train myself to fall asleep and to yeah yeah not 100% do like the lucid dreaming where you can where you realize you are asleep and you can control your dreams but before I fall asleep again I try to get into this uh, ambience or what I do is I try to revisit old buildings that meant a lot to me for example the old house of my grandparents where I was a lot and I try to memorize every little detail so that hopefully when I dream, I, it's in my dream as well. Yeah, and is it, I don't know if you want to share it, though, but is it, the, do those nightmares, is it something that they haunt you or is it just, uh, just well, something that you have to live with? No, it's, no it doesn't really haunt me. Um, but I, I just find it interesting. Of course, we all watch Netflix before going to sleep and... Um, the funny thing is that I get relaxed the most by watching horror movies. And now we are watching some kind of rom-com, a German rom-com. And I still get the weirdest dreams. And I tell my husband about it and he's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of, that's the new Epica album or so. No, um, <clears throat> I, I find it just very fascinating that what comes out at night. And uh, I love to analyze it. Where does it come from? Um, I find it interesting. And what do you think? What do dreams tell? What what do they what what do they reflect or mirror or what do you think? I guess nowadays uh, with the internet, social media, uh, all the electrical devices, we consume so much information. Sometimes too much for our brain to uh to how do you say develop or to uh, process so we process a lot in in the night uh, when when we were asleep um and my husband always jokes i can watch my favorite movies are the alien series and that relaxes me and he's like you watch movies about monsters to help you fall asleep 
and uh, but yeah I don't know um, there is of course a lot of symbolism in for example when you dream about something with your teeth that your teeth break that it means that some family member might be harmed or that something's going to happen but I did have two times that I uh, could feel something was wrong with people that I knew and that was two times so far and that was the moment of their passing but that was not me being asleep that was just me having like weird vibes so is it is it something that that that, that uh, do you have to be really connected to yourself to actually to open that 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 sensibility do you think no, I, I'm afraid I'm just uh, very susceptible to that. And I talked to Rob uh, also about that because he has that too. We are both kind of sensitive, high, highly sensitive people and yeah, not everybody gets, gets that. And yeah. uh, it's like you have huge antennas and they are there. You have to learn to live with it and protect yourself from it because that won't change. So that means that some some other people with uh, the wrong kind of energy or not the same energy of me, yeah. I have to stay away from because I feel sometimes like a sponge that I suck up bad energy from other people. So um, yeah, that's that's a learning process, I guess. And how hard has it been because you've been in the, well, in the public eye more or less since 2002. Uh, is it something that, that, that becomes easier? Well, it, I guess it helped a lot to find uh, a person similar in, in the band. Like I call myself and, and Rob, we are like the grandma and grandpa. We are always the ones going to our bunk <laughs> the first in the evening. You know, we, we do love to socialize and stuff, but we also like our privacy and just need to retreat. Uh, it's always very uh, exciting being around so many people, but I, I do love also to be yeah. by myself without being asocial or disrespectful but um, like you say being in the public eye having your eyes pointed at you almost all the time it's fun while i'm on while i'm on stage but off stage i'm actually a private person yeah um let's go back to what well, you said skeleton key uh, theme wise yes. um is this something that that, that um, set the tone for the rest of the album can you say that uh, no, no, not really, because there's there are five composers in the band. Uh, all of the guys write songs, and all like there are songs from all five uh, band members on the record, and they all have a very different sound to them. Uh, of course, we all work together as a band on those songs, so to make it more um, coherent, uh, to have it the epic sound, but still. The album is very diverse, and I think the skeleton key is a little bit more doomy, metal, it's very atmospheric. Uh, Abyss of Time has a little bit Irish folk metal feeling to it, and Seal of Solomon has a little bit the old epica vibe uh, to it with the little bit oriental melodies, uh, the verses with grunts. It reminds me a little bit of Seifeldine, one of our very first songs. And then a very catchy epic uh, choir chorus. Um, Rivers is a beautiful ballad. We've always had ballads on the album. Kingdom of Heaven, the epic long 13 minute song, uh, something we also love doing from, the, from day one. Um, Gaia is for me a very different song. It's written by our drummer, Arian, and it is completely different to the, the rest of the, of the songs. Code of Lives written by Kuhn. That also has a little bit more the older Epica feeling to it. Um, Synergize and Omega were written by Isaac. Um, yeah, and there's <laughs> a lot more songs on the record, but I think the Skylander Key is just one out of many different yeah. um, songs. Yeah, but normally this just more or less, not one, but several themes uh, to, the, uh, to the albums. And is it, what what was your input because i can imagine that if you write and if you have lyrics that you well lyrics don't go don't go all over the place but you, you but you follow certain themes during the album right 
Yeah, Mark came up with the title Omega and explained uh, at first that he wanted to have it uh, the name the Omega point, and that is the spiritual um, belief and scientific scientific speculation that everything is fated to spiral towards a, like the end point of divine unification. You know, when the earth Earth reaches its uh, Omega point, um, everything that exists will become one basically so you have alpha the beginning of the city the creation uh, of of the universe and omega is basically the the highest point the end of it and um topics that pass by a very big one is actually the balance between yin yang in light and dark that we all exist out of both and that we need to find a way to keep them in balance without one overtaking the other. And that is a, a theme that keeps on coming back in a lot of songs. But then there are also a couple of songs that uh, step out of that idea, like Gaia is about global warming, Code of Life is about genome editing, uh, Twilight Reverie is about the moment before you fall asleep that you have this this very short time frame where you get these uh, brilliant ideas, whether it's melodies or thoughts. Um, uh, yeah, what else, which, which other songs do we have? I have to keep track. Seal of Solomon is about the, uh, King Solomon, the founder of esoteric science. Yeah, yeah. Is it for and you? Is it the other songs, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, go on, go on, yeah. Are the other songs like Freedom, Abyss of Time, Synergize, uh, Rivers, they're all very much about the trying to restore the balance between light and dark. Uh, maybe wrapped in a different blanket in the lyrics, but the gist of it is very much the same. And without 100% talking about it, Mark and I, we always split up the lyrics. He always writes the lyrics for the songs he musically composed because he has a very specific idea about it. He told me about the green tablets, um, you know, the oldest found wisdom stones. And I read some passages of it. I didn't read the whole thing. I don't know if he actually did. It's quite a lot of <laughs> material. I'm sure he did, but there was always also this recurring theme of light and darkness. And um, unconsciously, we kind of had a lot of overlap with the lyrics without uh, discussing it. And the song Freedom, he started writing. It's about this Cherokee grandfather having this conversation with his grandson about life lessons. And he talks about these two wolves, which basically are also yin yang, the light wolf, the dark wolf, light representing everything, all things positive, love, hope, innocence, and the dark wolf anger, hate, jealousy, resentment, and that we need to be very careful which side we give more attention, more energy. And he asked me if I wanted to join in the songwriting of, uh, or the lyric writing of the song. So we yeah. kind of co-wrote it together. Is it, um, is it something that, that, that you feel that as every human has this, this yin and yang and that you have to balance yourself? Or is it yes. something that comes, comes from the outside sometimes too? No, I think we are all born uh, with both sides and that uh, it's up to us also to uh, learn how to control it, learn how to, uh, yeah, not manipulate it, but you, you yourself, you are the master of your own mind and your own, even though it's very difficult to, and it, it's also not something to be ashamed of because it's normal, it's human, so... Uh, you have to learn how to live with it, to accept it, and to control it. Yeah. And where, what stage are you at now with the yin and yang? Uh, I guess a little bit more to the darker side, <laughs> but that's to blame Corona. Corona to blame. <laughs> yeah. And not, not the beer. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Um, if I look back at your, uh, on, on your career now, um, can I say that 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 uh, Epica now? I I have the feeling that it, for you it it uh, not for you but for for the whole band that it that it uh, gives you now more possibilities than ever. 
You mean because we've reached a certain status? Yeah, mm -hmm. a status, but also, but I mean, also you are re revisiting your back catalog. You are also uh, um, the songs you are sometimes do acoustically. I have the feeling that you you've you've expanded more. Is it true? It gives you more. Just apart from recording new albums, you just you you can do more musically now with everything that you have. This, this, I I sense a sort of freedom. Yeah, or you can also say that we're that we're like dinosaurs and that we <laughs> we can dig up the fossils and uh, bring them out. That is true, but I polish them up. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. No, but I, but that's that's what I what I I don't know. It's 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 just the. I think you have to have some sort of. I oh, know. Let me then ask the question. Um, <laughs> what what was what was for you the decision to actually revisit, uh, for example, design your universe? What did you? What what was it? Sometimes people say, "Well, we stay away from it." So, what was it for you that you actually thought, "Well, let's revisit this and do it"? Uh, that is, for a big part, also management, I guess, but. Uh, for us, uh, before we became, let's say, a bigger band in the scene, we already did that with the first two, three albums when it was, I think, five years old. We just kept it simple by playing a live show and playing this, the album back uh, okay. beginning to the end. That's how uh, we started and just as a kind of fun way to celebrate uh, an anniversary, a birthday of an album. And as we got bigger and um, still around, I guess, that the fact that we're still able to uh, call this our job is something to celebrate, is a reason to celebrate, I guess. And um, I myself, I would love to re-record certain albums just because I would love to redo the vocals because I just can't listen to the albums uh, with my old vocal <laughs> technique um but yeah i mean we've also besides uh, re-releasing design universe we have also worked on a japanese anime we did some cover tracks for attack on titan that was a fun project to do and um yeah we'll see what's going to happen with the 20th anniversary because now with the pandemic everything is like mixed up yeah but um, we are a band who likes to party and likes to celebrate. Let's say that. <laughs> that's good. Um, now what I also sense is that that well the fact that that every band member writes and everyone has his input. Uh, I think that's also a healthy healthy situation. I think if you look back maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was less uh, less less uh, input. Yeah, yeah. Mark was then the the main composer but he was always open to let other people write songs as well and uh, with each new arrival uh, or band member arrival uh, starting with Aryan, uh, Isaac and Rob they also became songwriters and um, Mark is not a person who says only my songs have to be on the album he wants the best song to be on the album and everybody can contribute to that that's good uh, last question so to stop. Um, Transitus. Um, you sang on the album of uh, Arian Lucas, uh, Arian. Uh, what was it like? What was it like for you to do this? I love working with Arian. He's a great guy. I uh, always say yes to every project if without even hearing the music because I know whatever he does is great quality. I'm an admirer of his work and he's a great guy. So and Transitus was a uh, kind of a different project compared to what I've done in the past. But uh, yeah, it fit me well, the character, I guess. And uh, we, we, we um, because the angel of death is a little bit cheeky, naughty, has like a dark sense of humor and that's, that's me. So, <laughs> but I don't walk around in those corsets and wings at home. Yeah, and I thought it was really fun that he also made a comic out of it. And he sent me like the first designs of the drawing. He's like, oh, you should look at your outfit. And uh, he made me, or he, I could pick out the outfit for the character. And yeah, it was, it was fun. But I didn't have that much work because he's like a perfectionist. He prepares everything to the smallest detail. 
sends me over the, the guide tracks with guide uh, vocal lines, uh, vocal recordings, so I can just practice at home and I'm done within an hour. And then when we have uh, time or if I have some ideas, he's open for that as well. And uh, the video recording, the one with Tommy was in the studio in Amsterdam and the human equation was in his living room in the Corona time. Uh, and it was very basic, you know, I have to do my own hair and makeup, but I like, like that anyway. And uh, it was in front of the green screen and I had to yeah. act as if the globe, the earth, planet earth was in front of me, but there was nothing. I was just looking into the void and trying trying to imagine that I had a, yeah, yeah. the world in my hands. That's good. The, I saw the clip and um, maybe there's another career for you. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't see myself. If, if he ever brings up, comes with a movie, I want to have some acting classes <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Simone, thank you for your time. Um, okay.